Hello everybody and welcome to my fourth advanced Excel tutorial and this tutorial is going to continue going into uh, pivot tables so first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to thin this down a bit so I'm going to take the year out um, just so we've got a bit more tidy um, I'm also going to take customer out as well so just so you can see it again you just click on what you want to take out and you put it over here and I'm also going to take customer out right back to the beginning. So um, the data items you can do a lot more than just count how many of something there are. So let's say we want to look at um, uh, sale costs. So the total amount of money we're making and we want to do it by year. So let's put year on the side here and then let's put sale cost in the data item. At the moment, it's going to default to count it from all, so count of sale costs. So it's counting how many sales there are in each year. That's not what we want to do. We want to um, create a sum of all of these. So let's right click on the grey box that appears, go and count of sale costs, and go on to field settings. And then you'll see here that you have a whole list of different things that you can do um, with this data. So at the moment it's set to count, so it's going to count up how many you find. I'm going to change it to sum, click OK. So what this is doing is it's adding together all of the sales costs for each of the years. It's breaking them out by the years. Um, what it isn't doing, however, is changing it to the right format. So if I go back onto field settings, go to number, and you see that you've got your... Um, standard kind of formatting for numbers click OK and then it's bringing the numbers through here so really quick way of being able to do work out sales per year um, alternatively you could go um, to here field settings and you could put in average okay and this is going to show you the average sale uh, cost for that year. Um, if you go back into it, max, and that's going to show you the largest sale you had. And similarly, minimum is going to show you the minimum one. Um, and then the rest I've never really used before. Um, variance, I imagine it's variance. Standard deviation, I imagine it's standard deviation. Um, for any of you mathematic types, I imagine those could be useful. Um, and count numbers, count numbers, just count numbers, so it'll only count numbers. Um, so it'll leave that kind of annoying. Um, and product um, multiplies them together. So in this case, that's absolutely huge numbers. Um, I've never really used them before, um, and I use pivot tables a lot, but this, I, I can situations where they'd be useful. Um, so let's change it back to sum. Um, right, so sometimes you don't want it split down the side and this is what the page field items is for. So let's move the year up here. So um, you can either just click on the button and drag it up here um, or you can drag it out here and then put it into there. So I'm just going to drag it um, and then, so you've got your total sales forever. If you click on here, you'll notice you can only select one at a time when it's up here. Um, so let's go to 2003, click OK. And then you'll see that it's only then summing up for that one year. So if we put something else in, so let's say we put home payment. In, and then for that year, it's going to show how many... Um, how many sales there are for each one. So we can keep going through. We can make these bigger. 2008, 2013, and it just calculates it all for you. Um, and you can put as many things as you like up here. So you can go up to there. You can put sex in there and then select male or females. Make that a little bit smaller. Males only, females only. Um, and you can put as many as you like up there. Um, so that's what this section is for. Um, let's put them both back to all. So 
There's not much that's going on here at the moment. Um, I notice here as well that something's showing up as blank. This would suggest that some of my hometowns aren't filled in. So here it is. So at some point, I managed to not have a customer in. And so that's showing through as blank. And I'm actually having a thing for it, so I don't want that, so let's get rid of it. Um, and then, well, it hasn't updated, so why isn't it updated? Okay, so pivot tables won't actually be linked to this data. What, what, what it will do is it saves a pivot cache in the background. So the cache is just a, a bit piece of memory. Um, that is storing information in, so it will take a copy of this. So if you make an update here, it's not going to update here. But it's got a way around that. If you right click on it, click on refresh data, then it updates the pivot cache with the, the source data. Um, so that's how you can refresh from here. So if you make any changes to this one, then you just have to refresh on this one. Uh, let's see how much time we've got left. 20. So, next thing I want to show you is how to nest the things on the side. So, at the moment, I've got London, New York, Paris, sum of sales. So, what if you want to see within each hometown who the customers are? So, let's take customer, let's drag it over here. You'll notice that now rather than highlight the whole thing, I've got a choice of putting it on the left, putting it, uh, putting it on the left, putting it on the right, putting it here or putting it here. So what I want to do is put it to the right of these. So I'm going to put the cursor there. And you'll see what it's done now is it's for each hometown, it's looked up all of the customers that are in that town and then split them down by that. It's also provided you with a total um, and then again it's done the same for New York and Paris and blank but we don't really want blank because that's hide blank um, and this is really useful because um, as you can see from yourself it's instantly created kind of a hierarchy of where people are people are and it makes it really clear and then gives you the automatic totals um, and things like that. So that's really useful. Um, what you can also do, and this is where they become really dynamic, is you can double click on things. So if I double click on London, you watch what happens. So I double click and it collapses it all and only shows the total. Boom, boom. So you've got New York, London, Paris. Double click on New York and it expands it back out again so it shows you all the customers but only for New York. So as you can imagine this is really useful for giving to other people because they can go okay I like that total but I want to know more. Double click. Oh there's all the customers. Who's my best customer? Oh they're my best customer. Um, so that's how you can create kind of nested, um, nested little uh, nested little uh, tables so you can have sections and sections um, you can also you can go even further so you could have sex and we can put it either there, there or there and we'll put it in the middle and then break down for each town who, what the sex is we move it over to the side it's going to have female then all the towns male then all the towns we move it all the way over to here just going to tell you which one's male, which one's female, and it's going to show you the totals, which are really useful. Um, so we can hide all of these. So let's just go uh, click on the total, hide the total. And it's going to show us who's male and who's female. But I don't really want to do that, so I'm going to click on text and click on hide and get rid of that. Um, so that's it for this tutorial. Um, still plenty more for us to go through um, with pivot tables um, and also pivot charts. So I hope to catch you in the next tutorial uh, where I'll be teaching you some more.